Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions 4 p.m. BST on a Wednesday afternoon. I have with me Zach Franklin. Hey Zach, how you doing? Hey, doing good. Excellent. So today what we're going to do is we're going to dive into Zach's treasure chest and we're going to go and take a look at spying on the competitions across multiple platforms. Uh, this may end up over two um two episodes depends on how we get on because there's quite a lot of content here to cover there will be shared screen but also what we do is we'll narrate over the top for the playback on the podcast so no one misses anything zach do you want to give a brief introduction on yourself before we get started yeah sure so uh quite a few people probably already know me i've spoken at more than probably 150 different events for amazon and e-commerce i've been on most of the podcasts uh in the space um, most of you guys know me as the guy that works in Shenzhen, lives in Shenzhen with 400,000 Amazon sellers and works with most of the big Chinese guys to set up most of their marketing, um, yeah. as well as managing a lot of different types of operations, consulting, etc. I also run uh, Panda Leap, which is something a lot of you guys know for launching in Europe. Um, we, uh, I run a bunch of different e-commerce stuff on the side. I have four different high-ticket dropshipping sites selling products between like one to five thousand dollars on uh, Google Google shopping ads mostly. And uh, just for fun, I came out with a new project a couple weeks ago called Seller.Deals. So that's the domain Seller.Deals. If you want to save money on Helium 10, Jungle Scout, and like 30 other different services or software. Uh, we have coupon codes just for you, um, so go there, check it out. I also do weekly uh, video calls, so like this, but you can see everyone, not just Danny, mm -hmm. and um, just kind of talk. You know, there's no agenda, there's not really too much going on, it's just casual chat with like 20-ish other Amazon sellers from the US, from Europe, from Asia, and uh, it's it's been great. So that's a little bit about me and then what we're going to kind of go over today uh, it's kind of unstructured kind of winging it a little bit but I think it'll be very useful um, so basically you know where do we learn new stuff this is uh, kind of it you know a lot of people try to follow courses when you guys are first beginning or you're watching YouTube and I think a lot of people miss really good sources of information because all of my best strategies and all of my best tactics come from basically two different sources. Number one, I'm talking with crazy smart Amazon sellers every single day, right? I might reach out to Danny, I might reach out to uh, Anthony Lee, I might reach out to just all kinds of other Amazon sellers and talk with them. And especially if they're in different categories from you, they might be seeing a totally different Amazon than what you're seeing. They're seeing totally different image strategies, totally different uh, listings, totally different things from, from competitors, and you might learn from this, right? So the community is incredibly important, and if you're not talking out to you know three or four different Amazon sellers every single day, uh, this is one of the fastest things you can do to actually improve your business. So you're going to learn stuff. No one's going to talk about it on YouTube videos. No one's going to talk about it in courses. You're going to learn it first. Yeah. But the other way to learn stuff is to actually look at what's going on. What are brands doing? What are they doing on Amazon? And what are they doing off Amazon? Um, most of the time when I go into Chinese companies and they're confused about what a competitor is doing, the answer lies off of Amazon. Uh, most of the coolest strategies and the craziest stuff that we found to help on Amazon sales comes from off Amazon. And there are a lot of different types of brands and a lot of different channels that we can pull inspiration and ideas from so we can kind of steal like an artist or steal like a marketer. Um, so this is kind of what we're going to get into a little bit is how to find some of these stuff, uh, how to find strategies, how to find tactics. And this stuff really pays off, okay? The benefits can be really huge if you apply these strategies. For about a week now, I've been going to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different dropshipping sites, and I've been stealing every single conversion boosting hack I can possibly find. And today I woke up and I saw that I had almost $12,000 in orders. 
off of $20 in ad spend, right? And this is a direct result of the work that I was doing by actually looking at all of the different competition around the internet, finding exactly what they were doing, lifting it and putting it on my store. They might not be in the same niche, but they're doing the same business model. Yeah. Okay, so when I walk into a lot of Chinese companies, I ask them, who are your five major you know, competitors? And I'm probably already gonna know, and they probably already know. But what they're gonna do is list off you know, their Amazon brands, hmm. no other Amazon brands. Um, I want you, you know, anyone listening to this or watching this, you know, what are some of your Kickstarter competition? What are some of the Shopify brands that are competition? What are some of your big brand, old school retail competition? And then what's your Amazon competition? Because from those four things, from crowdfunding, from people with their own websites, from retail brands, and from uh, Amazon, those are four major categories where you can learn totally different stuff from. Okay. So let's talk about Kickstarter. Okay. Um, Kickstarter is fucking crazy to realize why people are actually buying a product. Um, if you look at Kickstarter, basically, if you're listening to this, go to Kickstarter right now and search for, you know, your niche. Uh, you know, like kind of your main keyword. Don't get too specific, something like journal. So I'm gonna look up journal right now. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and share the screen for people that are watching, but I'll talk about what's going on. All right, so I searched for journal and I searched for most funded, and you can also search by most backed. And what that is gonna do is show you ideas that have found some kind of support. Okay, people have uh, decided to give money to it. And this is really important with Kickstarter is that Kickstarter has to overcome a huge amount of kind of distrust about the product, right? Like the product hasn't been made, they're not gonna get it for a long time. Um, they have to overcome a lot of barriers in order to get the sale. So I'm gonna, I searched for journal, right? which is something I think a lot of people try to sell on Amazon. I know people selling this. Let's take a look. So look at the headline of whatever they're offering. The Freedom Journal, accomplish your number one goal in 100 days. So I see a lot of people on Amazon selling journals, just paper, you know? Hey, we have great paper. Uh, you know, it looks nice. It's whatever. They talk about the features. Kickstarter is all about the benefits. What is it gonna do for you? If you buy this journal, you can accomplish your number one goal in 100 days. And so you're, if you're wondering why are people really buying products, Kickstarter is really great at tapping into exactly what that desire is. Not only that, the pages are almost structured like an infomercial. Okay, they're gonna tell you story, right? Every Kickstarter guy has like a story of, of their brand, how they came up with this idea, how they did this. Kickstarters are really good at coming up with copywriting, with the angle for the product, with the correct um, kind of trust factors and stuff like this, right? Like, have you ever set huge goals but failed to accomplish them? Frustrating, isn't it? Are you tired of missing out on the life you know you're meant to lead? Are you ready for a fresh start? If you're prepared to set and accomplish your number one goal in 2016, allow me to introduce the Freedom Journal. This would make a fantastic Amazon product and fantastic Amazon copy, okay? I love to take basically any product image on Kickstarter is great as inspiration for your Amazon infographics because these are all meant exactly to persuade someone to give money um, to something that doesn't even exist, right? I lift stuff from this all the time, okay? If I look, let's say I do stuff in the wine category, I'm gonna go ahead and search for wine. Uh, 
Okay. Once again, I'm going to search for most funded. Just going to click on the uh, the first results. So this is Ito, a beautiful innovation in wine preservation. 6,891 backers pledged almost a million US dollars, 777,000 uh, pounds um, before this product ever existed. So perfect wine every time. That's what people want, right? Um, they have a video about like a, some astronomical number amount of wine being poured down the drain every year and like if this is you you need this product it has social proof from tons of different people beautiful product photography um, great infographics proof um, lab tests these are all sorts of different types of proof you can use to persuade someone that your product is better and they're using different stuff than Amazon, right? Your Amazon competition is doing the same thing you are looking at all the other Amazon competition, but they're not looking and lifting inspiration and tactics. Well, even with the um, what the graphic on the screen there, the animated GIF looks really good, doesn't it? It's dynamic as you're scrolling down the page. Yeah, I really wish Amazon had support for some of this stuff. Other platforms like uh, maybe Taobao has more stuff for video. Um, they have a product video because I did look this up earlier. Um, and they just lifted this this quote. The results were indisputable. Ito far outperforms them all. They have blind taste testing. Uh, they have the story. The average UK household throws away two glasses of wine per week, 624 million bottles per year. Um, so like an infographic like this would really be good in an Amazon listing, right? But these are things that if you are only looking at your Amazon competition, they will never think to do stuff like this. So if you want really out of the box product images, infographics, story, proof, and angle, Kickstarters have very professional copywriting and video and all this stuff. And you will be able to see what resonates with the market based on did people give it money? And you will be able to see exactly how much money did these guys make? So, um, Kickstarter and Indiegogo, all the crowdfunding platforms, I think are really an essential place to draw high impact uh, strategy um, that you can use on your stuff. And some of my best Amazon products and best Amazon uh, creative stuff has come from looking and you know just stalking Kickstarter. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing that for a second. So. For anyone listening to this, if you're at your computer, look up some of your Kickstarter competition. And if you're listening to this on audio, um, whenever you get home, whenever you're by a computer, go through this and actually look this stuff up because you're gonna find some stuff that's gonna surprise you. Cool, what we got up next? All right, so let's go to Shopify. So why would you wanna learn from a Shopify website? Because Shopify sellers are experts at bringing traffic right on amazon traffic is kind of done for you you know you got to do some ppc you got to do stuff but in general the customers are already there but if you want to bring more customers if you want to increase your customer retention if you want to add upsells increase your aov if you want to do uh conversion optimization and and other sorts of branding and seo you can learn so much from these different Shopify sites. So a lot of you guys might not know, how do you find a, uh, a Shopify site? That might be what you want, right? So I'm going to, once again, I'll open up Google one sec. I'll just show this as well. So this is an in URL Google search, right? Do you um, want so to we... share it back on screen when you got mom? Oh, here we go, got it, yeah. Yep. Okay, so all I'm going to do and search is in URL, my Shopify dash keyword, you know, whatever the keyword happens to be. So uh, let me think for a second. What should, what should we look up? I can look up once again, I can look up wine. So these are going to be all pretty much Shopify sites that have something to do with wine. 
right? Or I can type in, uh, let's do beverage center. All right, so if I search that, you get the original Shopify URL that you make when you like make the site. But then when you open that up, um, you may or may not get the, the full website, depending on if there is actually on like a my Shopify URL. But this way you can find quite a few different types of stuff in your niche by using these kind of in URL hacks. Um, you can find all kinds of other stuff too. Like if I search beverage center, then I think maybe take the powered by Shopify. Um, I can find probably quite a few things um, where we'll have stores powered by Shopify because that's like by default on a lot of the stuff. So if you have no idea about any of the Shopify sites, uh, you can look that up. And in general, by looking at a site, you have kind of an idea, is it doing well, is it doing bad? Um, like I'll just open up some other sites. So we can do a bunch of uh, reconnaissance on any sort of Shopify site. So if you want to know if a Shopify store is making money, one thing you can do is you can actually buy a product on maybe like the first day of the month at, at like uh, at around midnight or something like that. And then you also buy it again on the last day of the month. Just find the cheapest thing on their website. Guess what? Now you know exactly how many orders they got the whole month because Shopify orders are always sequential. So if you buy something and then you wait 30 days and you buy it again, you will see exactly how many orders they got that month. Okay, you can do it for a week, for a day, whatever you want to test, but you will see exactly how many orders they got. You won't see maybe how much they sold, but you will see exactly what's up. All right, so here we're on like a random kind of Shopify site. So now we're going to actually do another little hack, okay? So if you want to see what the best selling product and usually also how many products a, a Shopify site is selling, what you can do is you add this little URL string at the end, slash collections, slash all, question mark, sort, under space by, equals best dash selling. So what this does is it looks up all the products and then sorts them by best selling, okay? There are some ways where stores can kind of protect against this, but 99% of stores don't, okay? and if you see that it looks like a bunch of different products, um, you know, not like all one brand, all whatever, you will actually see exactly which products are resonating with that audience and exactly what you can do. Um, so this has been great. You know, I have my staff go out, find like the top 15 competitors. From those 15, find their like top 15 products each, find the suppliers, we call the suppliers, we get them, then we upload those products and we go live on Google, and then we make money. And it's that easy just from watching these you know, competitors and seeing what they do. Um, or other stuff, these guys put free shipping ends Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. order today in their logo. I can grab that. I'm like, okay, I could put some more text in my logo, right? I could go like, uh, uh, let me see, like here. This website's going to learn. Order by phone. Put the phone number in the logo. I like that. Maybe I should I should take that for my site. You know. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen again. But when it comes to Shopify, you can do all kinds of stuff to learn. What are they doing to drive traffic? What um, you know sort of branding works because they have a lot of trust they need to overcome with the customer, right? Because they're not Amazon. Someone needs to trust the site a lot in order to buy from it, or they have to really be captivated so that they don't go running straight to Amazon. Yeah. So if you want to make your Shopify store great, stop looking at other Amazon seller Shopify stores and focus also on what are just marketers and Shopify guys doing. Okay, and that can be really, really good to do it. So, so if you want to 
to summarize on the shopper side, uh, Shopify side of things, you were using sequential ordering. So you order on the first day of the month and then on the last day of the month, and then you count in the invoice numbers there in between those sales, between your first sale and your, la uh, your first buy and your last buy, and that yeah. will give you the total units sold for all of their catalog that's sold through it Shopify. Might won't tell you the units, just the number of so orders. orders. Yeah, so yeah, because yeah, if your average order size is higher, but it gives you a general gauge of how how well they're doing yeah. in terms of selling those products. So effectively, that's more like a product research uh, tactic as well. If you're looking to, yep. to sell products, not just on Amazon, but thinking I want to have a, a wider berth here and I want to do Shopify stores, what am I competing up against? And obviously, the uh, the kind of velocity that these guys are doing it, obviously. There are other dynamics. You don't know if they're driving a shit ton of traffic and they've got really smart guys like you well, who are programmers and marketers, but we'll get to that bit. Well, I mean, for that kind of stuff, that's more down on the tools side, yeah. which I'll talk about. Which we'll more. go into, yeah. Um, I'm just talking about in general to get the ideas behind mm. the brand, right? How yeah. to get the angle, you know, what what's their unique angle to sell their product or what what's unique. You know, what kind of colors are they using? What kind of fonts? What kind of design style? You know, all kinds of stuff that you can learn from Shopify competition. Hmm. Okay, let's go to your big brand competition. So big brands have big money. Hmm. And that means that they have a lot of smart people that are testing everything, right? If you have a brand that has been around for 10 years, uh, they've probably tested a lot of stuff about what works and what doesn't work, and they've lasted. Okay, and you can look at all kinds of things, but they have done really interesting stuff on websites. They usually have a lot of email marketing more than you know other types of brands, and basically they've tested stuff. They have years in the market, and even though you can come up and be more innovative and be a little more scrappy and add some hustle, uh, you have a lot to learn still from the big brands that are selling your type of product. You want to be able to learn how do you kind of talk the talk, right? Use, look at the language that they're using about the products, you know, even though they tend to be a little more bland in their copy than, you know, a lot of maybe e-com guys are, are used to, but learn how to steal some of the stuff that they do so that you can look like a big brand to your customers, right? You know, like a lot of their, design choices, you know, you can kind of take, you know, you can look at like bows, uh, like ads or something like that. You can take something and then you can make your brand look a little maybe more sophisticated or a little bit more like one of the one of the big boys. Um, and then obviously all of you guys look at Amazon all day, every day. You know your market inside and out. You look at all the different keywords who's ranking on the keywords, you know all your competition already. But one of my tips is don't just look at your category, okay? Watch maybe dozens of different categories, okay? Look at different image, because you'll see different image trends in different categories, right? One trend that um, I kind of started actually on hidden cameras um, was to make it look super small, have it like held in the fingers like this. Within a week, everyone stole my <laughs> my image template, right? Um, so you could see that like actually having someone holding the product with the white background um, really made it stand out in the search results. If someone was watching that category, they could take that and they could put it in another category where that might work really well and make some money, you know. So watch different categories or look at like supplements. Supplements, you know, a long time ago, everyone just had like the bottle of supplements. Now every, every supplement seller has like the box because they have more real estate on the packaging side for the images. They have more place to put inserts. They have more stuff. Um, so by watching uh, like the supplement, supplements category, and if you're in a low co competition category, it doesn't change as much. You want to look at a high competition category where people are fighting it out so that you can see what are people doing, right? Like if you look at the uh, hemp uh, category, uh, like hemp gummies or whatever, it's crazy, okay? That category is changing all the time, every day, and the uh, product images are, are wild. Like you, you can always take a lot of stuff from these kinds of things. 
All right. If you guys are having fun so far, let us know. Leave a comment. Um, I've got, I'll go through to the uh, comments now. So, Maledja, I think it is, pronounced, says, hello. Facebook user says, this is a great insight, Zach. Thank you. Yalchin says, hey, misters, nice to see you. Wellington is back. So good morning, sirs. Great information here as always. Facebook users back again with that's a killer tip talking about the uh, the order numbers from beginning of the month to the end of the month. And Cybe says, hey, guys, wet and windy Wednesday. This is great for general competitor mm -hmm. analysis and not just AMS product research. So what we got up next? We're going into the tools. Yeah, just a little bit of the tools. Some of these you guys might be kind of familiar with some of them. Uh, maybe not. So mm -hmm. um, let me kind of go through some of this stuff. So yeah, um, I think more of these tools have become closer to kind of common knowledge, but I'll kind of go over some of them. Um, because a lot of people, you know, when I bring this up, I'm always surprised because I'm in this stuff every day. And I see a lot of people have no idea or experience, right? So here are just some of the super basic stuff you guys should absolutely know. Okay. I'm I'll bring this up on the screen. Now. Can you guys see the screen? Yeah, it's up now. All right. Obviously, Similar Web is one of the best sites for basically gauging is a site getting traffic, right? If a site, if like you're looking up a Shopify site and, or a big brand site and it's not getting traffic, and maybe you don't need to copy that one. Maybe you don't need to, to look deeper into that one, right? Um, let's do, I don't know, let's just use Bose uh, as an example for some of this stuff, right? Uh, Bose is a fairly big kind of headphone brand. Um, so we can see they get about 5.5 million hits. People stay on their site about two minutes. Uh, mostly traffic's coming from search, right? Search might also be shopping ads, a little bit of email marketing, a little bit of display, referral traffic from different blogs. You can see where people are referring and where are they going. Okay, those are really important. If you pay for a similar web, you can see like all the different data. You can see what kind of keywords they're paying for, what's organic. And then some of the other tools we're going to go to, you can see even more uh, data, right? You can see YouTube is their best kind of social can, we, what, what, can you break down the display advertising there? Just scroll back down. There we go. Okay, so if you are buying display ads, you are usually buying display ads through another kind of traffic source. And then this will show the publishers. The publishers is the website where it's actually showing up for. It. But it might not tell you if you buy through Google, your ad will show up on CNET.com or something, right? You actually need to go to like cnet.com and look at what ad networks they're using. So then you can buy traffic on the same uh, platform they're using to show up there. Um, so you can actually see top ad networks. They're using uh, Conversant Media. They're using Google Display, Skim Links, Yahoo Advertising, Amazon Ad System. These are pretty sophisticated type of things that you would expect from someone like Bose. And it might be a little more difficult for someone in the Amazon space. I don't hear a lot of uh, people in the Amazon space talking about Google Display Network uh, or different DSP kind of ways to buy. Uh, display ads can be really good if you dial them in, but they can also be very difficult to get working. Okay, It's great for retargeting if you're just starting off. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, the thing is, we, you know yourself, Google Display is a, is a tough nut to crack yeah. unless you've got the right proposition. Most stuff, I would say, fails on there, but then you can have it off to the races with the odd product here, there, or offer, especially when it's free and stuff. But it's very difficult to say sell high-ticket valued items and, and products per se unless you've managed mm -hmm. to dial in and land on the right portals in terms of the publish housing yep. where, and where it's got enough velocity and you've got a good enough click-through rate to get that going. It is cheap, but when you look at those publisher reports, some of the, it, a lot of it doesn't look like you know real traffic. So basically, mm. you're going to have a lot of fraudulent traffic running through display because there's a lot of incentivized uh, stuff for the publishers to make it look like they get clicks. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, so Facebook has a tool, Facebook ad library, started because of the whole Cambridge Analytica scandal. Um, but basically, Facebook made the best spy tool for Facebook, right? You can go to anyone, you can see all their ads. I'm going to go with uh, Donald Trump because he has the craziest fucking ads that are out there. <laughs> and they're really good. Like, I was watching this, you know, the whole campaign looking at their ads and I thought Trump might pull it off just because of how good the ads were, you know, super emotional, very, you know, clearly a direct response copywriter, you know, he found a good one. Mm -hmm. um, like if you are listening to this, when you are at your computer, look up Donald Trump's ads by going to Facebook ad library and just searching Donald Trump, right? All right, so I'm just gonna pull up Facebook. Okay, um, what should I what should I look up? What product wise? Yeah, I don't know spatulas. I don't know any spatula brand. I'll, I'll go with those, those again. Uh, All right, what about I know example Anchor? They've got a good array of products and they uh, do big numbers on Amazon, don't they? Yeah, that's and, great. And they're and they're based, I think, in Shenzhen near you, aren't they? Yeah. So I'll go to Anchor. Okay. So you see this thing, page transparency. Okay, then you will be able to go to ad library, right? So you go to the page and then you go to ad library, right? And you will be able to see all the ads that they're running. Uh, let's go with United States. And you will see when they started. So for example, this ad started running October 4th. Okay, and you can even go to the landing page so you can see what they're doing on the landing page. Um, so you can see what style creative they're doing. And one really useful hack you can do with this is you can just give this to your designer and say, make me something like this, right? Instead of trying to figure out what are you gonna do, you can find inspiration. And one thing I recommend everyone to do is when you're going around the internet, when you're looking at all this stuff, save everything you like, right? Save everything you think is good and make what's called a swipe file, okay? All marketers have a swipe file that if you're looking for ideas or you wanna just have stuff, you can just pull it up. You can say, hey, Anchor did this, um, I really like it. And one way you can tell if ads are working, all right, like let's say this ad has been running since October. It's probably working because it's January, almost February, and the ad is still running, hmm. right? If ads don't work, people don't keep spending money on it. So if an ad has been running for a long time, that means it's a good ad and something about it is working. So you want to look up your competitor stuff on ad library and it usually is only gonna show ads that are on right now, ads that are running. If someone turns off their ad today, you will not be able to, or turns off their ad today, you will not be able to see it tomorrow. So you need to continually look at their ads, otherwise you could have issues. Okay, so eff effectively the default is really, instead of looking to see po past ads that have been running for a month and then ones are running for six months, you know the six months ones are working. Realistically what's happening, they're just rolling out that first ad for the month. So yeah. effectively you're looking at concurrent ads and see which is running for the longest and that's normally your indicator, yeah? Yep. Okay, just one second. Yeah, so that's really important. And then Google has a bunch of different tools as well that we can take a look at. Uh, Google Market Finder, I think it's something like that. Yeah, so this is a cool tip I think. Uh, I haven't heard anyone in the Amazon space actually ever talk about. Uh, Sorry, just for the podcast benefit, what's the, this is marketfinder dot, I can't read what it says in the URL, dot. Think with Google dot com. Okay. So if you just Google, 
Google Market Finder, you will mm -hmm. find this. Okay. And so what this does is it actually tells you what other countries have demand for what's on a certain website, right? So like if I, I guess we're using Bose.com again as an example. Okay, they're gonna like pull categories from the website, do a bunch of crazy stuff and then tell you uh, stuff like cost per click in different countries, demand in different countries, right? Headphones, so you can actually pick the categories, hit confirm. So number two is actually India for headphones and number three is actually Japan. They'll tell you stuff like household, uh, disposable income, ease of doing business and the monthly searches that the category has. Um, so when wow. you guys are looking, um, you can actually look at every single country and it will tell you their their rank of how much people are searching for this. Um, and you can get more data if you kind of fill out the, the information and stuff like that. All right, Google has a lot of reports also locked away behind Merchant Center. Um, so you are actually able to see what's best selling on Google Shopping. Um, okay, so that is down in growth programs and then best sellers. You are able to see trending products on Google Shopping. Uh, basically for any category, you can look at the top brands. So if you are doing competitive research on brands, um, Google is a great way to find what's good, right? So you can see like in apparel, you can see Lululemon is the most searched, uh, basically clothing stuff on, on this. And you can narrow it down by subcategory. You can download these as a list and you can go through and you can see what is really selling on Google, right? What are people searching for? Is the demand going up? Is the demand going down? Um, do you have these products in your inventory? Um, so this, this is just an absolutely phenomenal uh, tool that I use for a lot of the stuff that I'm doing. But there's another thing, let me see, shopping.think with Google. So Google also has, um, they've kind of changed this a little bit, like very, very recently. But you are able to see trending categories on Google uh, stuff like patio heaters, uh, bidet faucets, craft molds, and then what are the trending products in there? So this is also really good product research stuff for Amazon. Hmm. And you will see where are people searching this stuff, right? So you will be able to market it. Okay, then they have more stuff where you can search, but I don't know what they did with it. I haven't been able to find it since like last week. It used to be at this URL. Um, yeah, thanks for the comment. Uh, yeah, if you guys, if this is useful, let me know what you think. If this is new, if you've seen this before, let me know. Uh, but these are some reports from Google that I think Amazon sellers almost never talk about that are very, very useful for me. Yeah. Okay, going back to a couple other things. Okay. AdBeat, AdBeat's one of my favorites, All right? Once again, I'll just use Bose.com. But this is for kind of creative, right? For mm -hmm. ads and stuff you might want to run on Facebook. You can see what's working for them either on Facebook or on display, how long ads are running. Like they have 179 different ads this month. You can see um, like what sizes they're running, what kind of creative type where they're running it. Um, so like their longest running ad has been running for 164 days. Their longest running page has been running for 484 days or 481. Um, and you can see like what kind of appeals and what kind of stuff that they might be using in their ads that you can kind of steal. Um, like for example, if it's not super slow to load, why that's like, loading up me i just do the comments Cybe says pure gold uh, pure gold this is my uh, rest of my lockdown field one says excellent information thanks happy buyers said would love to learn more from you man and wellington says this is fire thanks again so what's the site here called sorry 
Uh, this is adbeat.com. Yep. Okay, so here, once again, if you're trying to find some inspiration for your designers, you can just send them this. You know, uh, for the people looking, it's it's just simple display ad, but it would look great uh, for you guys to make. So stuff like when your home becomes your office, Bose noise canceling headphones shop now. Super easy type of ad to make that uh, I think would work very well. Or they use like the NFL draft in their uh, marketing, you know, doing very seasonal or a lot of things about people like focusing on their work. So when people are spending ads, um, it says a lot about what their customers actually want because people are spending money. And yeah. if you know their marketing team is spending money and they're not getting any results, that marketing team is not going to be around for very long. Um, if you want to see all kinds of more ads, we got Adplexity, um, Adplexity. Um, so some of the sites have a daily search limit um, on free plans. On paid plans, all of these guys have also like paid plans as well. Adplexity is one of the ones that is paid, but Adplexity is fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. um, this is definitely straight out of the affiliate world. If you want to see uh, e-commerce ads, if you want to see native ads, if you want to see push ads, if you want to see mobile stuff, these guys are doing it on a level that I've almost seen from just no other traffic source. Right, so Adplexity is incredible. You also have uh, Anstrex, okay? So basically, the, these are more for affiliate marketers, but you can find some like crazy landing pages from doing this. Um, wait, it's one of these. I didn't think that they mostly did any Shopify, but I guess they do. Yeah, they have Anstrax Dropship, Anstrax Push, and Anstrax Native. So you can see some very different types of ads than what you're probably used to. Uh, there's also Magic Ads. This is the la last one I'm going to show you other than SEMrush, which I'm going to show you some cool tricks. Um, Power Ad Spy. So this one will show you a bunch of different e-commerce ads and Facebook ads and stuff like that, that you would be able to uh, maybe not find unless you knew their pages before. So all these are good. Most of them have free trials and you can learn quite a bit. Um, but I'm gonna go with some of my favorite stuff you can do. Just two quick little hacks and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap some stuff up, I think. Sounds good. Okay. So one interesting, Thing Google Keyword Planner lets you do. Some people know this hack. Some people don't know this hack. So we'll just kind of uh, open up Amazon. Let's find something. Let's find Cohen. So I worked with Cohen for a while. They're an absolutely fantastic company. OK, so I'm just going to take one of the URLs, like just the base URL, pop it in to start with a website use this page and if you are an amazon seller and you want to run google ads this is a really great place to start because you can pop in your amazon page it'll pull out keywords for you it'll pull out searches um, pull out bids and you can start running straight from what it finds as relevant keywords from your amazon listing right and also how much uh, searches are being generated Another thing you can do with the actual Amazon URL for, um, for your marketing stuff is you can actually see what kind of backlinks are going to um, any of these kind of Amazon pages, right? Let me find a URL somewhere. Yeah, okay. So use an anchor example here. This is a tool called SEMrush, S-E-M-Rush. And this is a fucking crazy tool. Um, so I can pop in an Amazon URL, and I can actually see stuff like traffic from Google. I can see uh, basically keyword trends, but most importantly, I can see the backlinks. So I can actually reach out to all these people that link to them and get them to link to me too. 
So I can find, um, like here, I view details. You know, it'd be quite funny. Give it a couple of weeks. There'll be a load of YouTube videos claiming all this stuff for themselves after listening to your session. This happens every and, time. Like, <laughs> and ends up in a load of people's presentations claimed as their own. Yeah. Always. You know, I, yeah. uh, but someone ripped off my affiliate world speech almost word for word and made it like a value post for one of the uh, Facebook groups and like posted there like, guys, I just found this, this crazy stuff. Yeah. And then I just commented and I'm like, wow, thanks for paying such great attention to my speech. <laughs> and then he, he deleted it like 20 minutes later. Um, what, your comment or the post? Uh, the post. Yeah, He's like, yeah. shit, I didn't think Zach is going to see this. Um, so that was that was funny. I see a lot of stuff like that. Um, like I, I was one of the first people that talked about um, basically all kinds of stuff like Facebook bots, uh, mini chat. I talked about mini chat within like two weeks of them coming out. Hmm. I talked about uh, a lot of different Facebook strategies before anyone else did. I talked about retargeting your audience with Facebook and Google uh, before pretty much anyone else um, and all kinds of stuff. So once again, if you're watching the video, you can see basically just different backlinks um, that are going towards um, the stuff you can also search by when they were uh, basically linked. So you can see if they're recent, if they're very old, and you can do a lot of stuff with this to basically boost your own Amazon listings or to get more referral traffic to your own listing. Okay, so well, that's about it. Should we go through, I've got your notes up here. Can I just quickly run through with you the stuff that we covered just to wrap on this yeah, unless you want to yeah, wrap it i was going to say we've done the kickstarter using the journal example where you are focusing heavily on the copy the images animated gifts etc and obviously the funds raised to show the popularity of the product mm -hmm. then on shopify uh the way to search for it by using the all question mark and sort you also covered the um by at the beginning of the month by the end of the month again to get an idea of how many orders not individual products, but how many orders the website took in that 30 day period because of sequential uh, invoice um, num like numbering. Uh, yeah. There was one other thing we missed off Shopify. What was the other thing that you did to work out the popular products again on the page? Um, I think that that was the thing, sort by best selling on the collection. That's right, yeah. To see yeah. Exactly in order what has the most orders on the store. Yeah. Maybe not what's brought in the most revenue, but you do see what products were ordered the most. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's good. Um, and then we moved on to big brands. So we understand uh, they've already done a lot of that testing for you. So effectively looking at their website uh, and the headers on the website, we forgot that. So you can add uh, delivery dates. Last uh, delivery on Wednesday, uh, 11.59 is an example to give a, a, like a, what's the word for it? Like not a scarcity effect, but like let you know, like if you want to order this yeah, week, you need just, to do it. You, you can add some more information. Exactly. Uh, and then, to, to then you got like the logo. Yeah, then you've got telephone numbers and stuff for obviously reasons for trust so they can contact you, especially if you've got like high ticket items mm -hmm. as well. Uh, then traffic sources, we took looked at spying on Facebook, going to the ad mm -hmm. library, use Trump as an example there in terms of the ad duration. Was it? No, that wasn't the ad duration. What was the Facebook library one? Because there was one there where you look at the time the ads were run. So yeah. Yeah, you see how long the ad has been running. And so you're able to basically know is it a good ad? Is it a bad ad? And you can also see all the landing pages and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Be I found some crazy Amazon strategies doing this. Um, for example, there was a Indian shampoo brand mm -hmm. um, that did some of the craziest custom uh like they built a whole app that was just this funnel yeah. um, and like I basically rebuilt that app and then I used it to launch tons of products mm. and I would have never found it if I wasn't digging through their their Facebook ads yeah. I have found absolutely crazy strategies I mean this is one of the ways I found um, like the Bioschwartz review funnel and built that for my stuff 
Um, you know, I found Brad Hot Beauty's whole lawn strategy. I found different stuff, all kinds of, uh, of competitors were doing. And then I was able to implement similar style stuff um, that helped me in my own business. Yeah. So this is a really just an important step. And also I didn't think I mentioned it before, but you know, obviously buy your competitors' products, sign up for their email lists and like pretend to be a customer, like their Facebook pages, just dig into it. Mm. Okay. You know, so that the more you can see that's going on, the more you're going to learn. And you might um you know, the more you learn about marketing, the more you learn about e-commerce, every time you go to their website, you might notice something new or something you're not doing or something relevant for you. Yeah. And Google spying. Remind me, the URLs are not here. Um, merchant something. There's two, two Google sites that you went to. Yes. So Google Market Finder. That's so right. Yeah. These are things to Google. You don't need the URL. So Google Market Finder and Google Shopping Insights. That's right. And in there, the reports, uh, the marketing research tools I've got here is you've got Google Market Entry, Google Shopping Insights, Merchant Center reports. And obviously you yep. went through the keyword planner. You put in the Amazon URL so that you could actually see uh, rough search volume for the month and backlinks as well from the canonical URL. Was that right? Yep. Yeah. And the list of tools just to give out to the audience again is the, the general spy tools were covered add plexity magic uh adx or adx uh amstrex and the final one was sme rush which is you also put into the amazon canonical url to pull up some, yes. some if data if you well. only had to use one yeah. i would recommend semrush yes um you're going to be able to see all their google traffic um, a lot of seo stuff and a lot of content marketing that you guys can do as well yeah um, it has a lot of kind of bang for your buck for SEMrush. Cool. Final comment here. Uh, Side B said, this is proper secret squirrel shit. Love it. All right. Um, Zach, anything you want to talk about before we wrap the show? And uh, maybe I can twist your arm to come back in the next couple of weeks to do another session. Because yeah, I know sure. I know you've got like this list of about 300 uh, things that you do in terms of uh, like external traffic, you know, when you're buying from uh, mm -hmm. uh, ad houses and stuff like that. So I know that uh, you've got to keep some of this stuff yourself, but it'd lo be lovely to get you back and do a couple of more of these over the coming yeah, weeks. I, mean, I, uh, I, when I went out to London the last time, I literally talked about Amazon and marketing for more than two and a half days, mm. like straight, just me talking. I got plenty of stuff. Uh, to kind of go over and I, I love going on stuff like this. If you guys want to want to chat with me um, You can go to seller.deals go to where it says like Facebook group or virtual events I do a meetup every Thursday. So tomorrow if you guys want to go I have uh, Gonna do a live call at 8 p.m. China time, which I think is convenient for UK. I'm not sure and then um you can email me, Zach, at amzkungfu.com. Uh, if you have me on LinkedIn, I probably won't see it for like a month, but I'll read it eventually. Um, and then you can also reach out to Danny to reach out to me uh, mm -hmm. or anything. So, And the, uh, you've got a podcast. Is it launched yet, the podcast, or it's coming soon? Yeah, so I'm working on a podcast, but then I also realized that Clubhouse might have a huge impact on people's podcast habits. So it seems like a lot of people are... Yeah decreasing their podcast usage and increasing their clubhouse usage. And I like kind of the live interaction type stuff. We did record an episode with my friend Ryan Garrido, who is a genius when it comes to high ticket drop shipping. Uh, he did more than $2 million last year on his own Shopify, selling absolutely bonkers products, you know, and it's all like revenue verified stuff. I've seen all of that ad accounts. I've seen it as like Shopify. I've seen everything. And we stuck around for like two and a half hours with um, everyone there live on the event. So when I do kind of, if I do a podcast thing, I'll do, trying to do it once a week, but it will be through those virtual events live on AirMeet where you can connect with other sellers from around the world totally for free. And the URL for that on Thursdays is just seller.deals slash 
meet. Okay. Cool. And that way you can meet up. We have people that are doing like six figure days. We have people just starting. We have like all levels uh, from all over. You are absolutely, if you are listening to this, you are welcome to join and we have a great group. Sounds good. Guys, uh, thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to tune in to Sharon Evan tomorrow, which is Thursday, 4 p.m. BST UK. Back on Monday will be Isabella. I'll be back here Tuesday and Wednesday. And so the new format, just to remind people again, is Monday is Isabella Hamilton. I'm on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is Sharon Evan. Let me know what you think of the new format. I just want to make sure that we're constantly pumping out content uh, multiple times a week i might take it up to five days we don't know but i'm testing the new format now where we i have guest hosts so we can keep bringing content to you so drop me an email danny at sellersessions.com i'm going to sign off now thank you again zach take care of yourself take care of your family out there and uh, i'll see you again next week take care